Hey guys, my name is Kaz. I teach music production at Beat Creative Training. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a beat in Logic Pro X. I'm going to be going through some drum programming, on playing melodies in, and also editing your MIDI data as well. Let's get in. So when you open up Logic, um, this is what you see on your screen. So the main two we're going to focus on um, software instruments and audio. So select software instruments and I'm just going to leave that as empty channel strip and press create. Now for trap on um, the BPM, which is on beat per minute ranges. So BPM is um, basically how fast or how slow your track is going to be. So by default, Logic is set at 120 BPM. So if I press play, so space bar on the keyboard and press um, this um, icon right here, which is the metronome, you are gonna hear a click track. Now the click track is gonna um, help me keep in time with the project. Now I wanna um, start by adding an instrument and just catch a vibe um, to just inspire me to move forward. So if I press this icon right here, or Y on the keyboard as a shortcut, that's gonna show me my library. Uh, maybe we're going to go for a guitar. So let's select guitar and let's try the acoustic guitar. Now, currently, I've got my MIDI keyboard plugged into um, my computer, which is going to enable me to trigger sounds using my keyboard. But um, an alternative way is to press Command and K. And what you have here is a virtual keyboard that will do the same thing. So I'm going to mess around, play something on the keys till I find something I like, and then we're going to record that in and start to mess around with it. So if I press play so I can hear um, the click track, and we're going to play along to the click track. So we're going to try that. So to record, you can either press this record button or the shortcut on the keyboard is out. Now, when I press record, I'm going to get a four beat count before it actually starts recording. So I'm going to hit a click track four times before I'm recording. One, two, three, and. Now that's recorded. If you listen back to that, just press on space bar again to play. It sounds all right to my ears, but because I am human, I am bound to make errors. So as you can probably tell, um, some of the notes were just slightly off time, but we can fix that. So if I double click um, to go into the piano row, we get this window that basically lets us edit all the MIDI notes we've just inputted. And now I'm just making this bigger. And what I can do is I can quantize. And what, qu what quantizing does is um, it moves all of the notes on grid. So when I zoom in, if you look at these lines right here, so these are the grids that the project is measured by essentially. And these are where my MIDI notes are relative to the position. So as you can tell, this very first note is slightly late because the grid actually starts right there. Sometimes it's good to have um, variations in timing, um, depending on what sort of feel you're going for. But for this particular track, um, I want something very tight. So I'm going to quantize. So to do that, I want to select everything. Um, by default, um, this will be set to a 16th note quantization. Um, obviously, you want to mess around with this depending on the value of um, the notes you are playing. So if I just press Q, as you can see, if I just undo that so you can see what that's doing. So if I press Q again, and just pay attention to this note and what that does. So that's now snapped to the closest grid. Have a listen. So I'm happy with that if I press P, which is the shortcut to get back into the piano roll, that's going to get rid of that. And let's try duplicating this track, so create another copy and play another melody over it. So to duplicate, just press this button right here, or a key command is Command and D. Again, I'm just going to play around on the keyboard till I find something I like. So 
So same thing we did. So double click into the piano row, click select all, command and A, and press Q to quantize. So it's in time. So let's listen to that back. So I could hear one note still being slightly off time and quantizing does that sometimes. It moves it to the wrong grip. So we're just going to zoom in and pay attention to where that note is. So that note right there should have been there instead. So we're just going to move that by clicking and dragging into position. P to come out of that. If I zoom out so I can see where everything is. So we're going to leave that as that for now and maybe let's start building some drums. Add a new track. So I'm going to go for my ESS24 um, because this is where I personally keep my drum samples. And I'm going to load one of my banks, which I can also find on the left here. So let's go for... So again, if I press a note on my keyboard... I can trigger the sample. So just a reminder, Command and K on the keyboard, you can do the same thing. So just to quickly show you how I got my samples onto this sampler. So if I go in my finder, wherever your samples are, you just select whatever samples you want to use, click and drag into Logic. And we're going to get this option. So we want to place all, 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 all files sorry, on one track. Okay. And if I just right click, so make sure everything is selected, then right click and convert to new sampler track. Sometimes to get that option, you have to go a different route. So right click, so you can also go convert and then you find it here. And what I can do here is set the range of where I want the sample to play. So there's only two or three samples actually. And I wanted to start on C1 on the keyboard. And if I press OK, now when I press the note C1, Command K so I can show you what I'm doing here. So go down the octave. That's how you get the samples. So I've done that for several different sounds and basically built my own kit. So here's one of them. So let's play the track and let's get something going. Right, because I'm going for a trap sound, in trap music we usually have a, a clap or a snare or a rim shot on the third beat. So just to very quickly show you what beats are. So if you listen to the click track, every single one of those hits that you can hear is a beat. So if I count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. On every third beat I am going to put a clap or a snare in. So I'm going to get a guitar playing and find a sample that I like. We're just going to go with that one. So record R on the keyboard. And we're going to get a four beat um, count before record. One, two, three. And... Go into that by double clicking. Select all. And then Q to quantize again to put everything in time. But as you can probably hear, all of these notes are hitting at slightly different velocities of volume. And if you look right here, we have something we call a velocity slider. So if I select this note, you can see this is at 104. And if I select this note, this is 127. I mean, that obviously, this is quite loud in comparison. So with this style of music, we sort of want dynamics, especially with the um, claps to be um, consistent. So if I go functions, and if I go MIDI transform, and what I want to do is I want a fixed velocity. So select and operate. So come off that. Now if I click on this and pay attention, every single one of them is now at 100. So with the track. 
just to keep organized, I'm going to name my tracks as I go along. So double click, I'm going to name that my clap. Let's call this main guitar. Let's call this guitar melody one. And if I duplicate this track again, so I can use another sample. So command D, or you can press this button right here. So we got the basis of the beat, but now we want to add some groove to it. So maybe we're going to program some hi hat in. And I'm going to do this a different way to how I did the clap. So what I want to do is to draw it in. So how we do that is we right click. Um, create empty MIDI region. By the way, if you just rename, let's call that hi hat. And if you just click and drag the end of the region, um, it changes um, the cursor. So we can extend. And if I double click to go into the piano roll, obviously we've got nothing at the moment. Now, if you pay attention to this right here, we've got different tools that we can use within Logic. And to draw, as you probably guess, we can either use a pencil or we can use a brush tool. Right, so for this example, I'm going to use a brush tool. And if I just zoom in to see what I'm doing, and let me just play the track. So first of all, I want to find a hi-hat sample. Maybe we'll go with that one for now. We can always change it later. The device zoom in again so we can see the grids closely. Now with the brush tool, um, if I was to select um, a rhythmic value right here and literally just um, brush across um, the grid, it's going to give me multiple notes of that value. So let's try eighth note, for example. This is the sample that I want. So I'm just going to click and drag across to my right and watch what happens. It's just giving me eighth notes, right? Rather than having to draw them individually. So let's have a listen. So that sounds all right at the moment. So what I can do just to make this faster, is if I just delete the last one, and I can just, so I've got four of them, select all. And if I just copy that over, hold down Alt to my keyboard, click and drag. And let's have a listen. Okay, happy with that for now. So if I press P to come out of that, let's make this shorter. And just click and drag the end. And now what we can do is um, we can repeat that. So to do that again, we can either hold down Alt and click and drag. Or if I just select that and press Command and R on the keyboard, um, it's going to ask me how many copies I want. So I just want one. Press OK. As you can see, the names on the region is currently not matching the names on the tracks. So right, to fix that, if you just select all, right click, and then we we'll just um, name region by tracks. And now everything is all matching. We are going to come back to the hi-hat. Um, for now, let's add some 808, right? So if I add instrument again, still in my ESS24 um, sampler. So using the same method of um, bringing the samples into the sampler, I've also got an 808 that I've already pre-made. Right, so I'm going to play around again till I find something I like. Let's try that. One, two, three, and... to quantize that so select all Q cool so if I select everything and again want to copy across one more time so we can record another 8 or 8 variation so again key command is command and out we just want one copy delete that 8 or 8 and try to figure out a different part when it gets to this part. So let's just record from there. So click where I want to record from.
So to stay organized, the value is press Alt and C. I've now got my color palette and if I just select red, so I like to color my bases, or label my bases red. Now to go back to the high hats and let's make this a bit more interesting. So first of all, let's EQ some of the lows, click on um, audio effects and I can just add an EQ. And I've just added in a channel EQ. And I'm just removing a lot of those lower frequencies that we don't really hear anyways. If I do the same for the clap, so again, add an EQ. And obviously, I'm not going to roll out as much as I did for the Hi-Hat because um, the clap has more lower frequency information than the Hi-Hat does. So let's press play. <laughs> I just press that and if you're not sure just press the analyzer and every time it hits it just gives you a rough um, idea as to what frequencies um, that particular sample is using or taking up so as I can see there isn't really much going on around this region so if I just take that out now to my hi-hats let's just add some rhythmic variation just to make it interesting so if i just double click and again i'm just going to select my brush tool so if i just click right here and press brush and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to delete some of these notes just to add more groove and select different values and um brushing um different rhythmic value notes so let's have a listen So right there, for example, I think I can have a faster rhythm. So, so just click on it to get rid of it. And maybe let's try 16 triplets. And I think we'll try that there again. Let's try the same here and just have it slightly different. So all together. just select these two and move them across so I know that those are my more complicated hi-hats these are my simpler ones so we're going to start with that in terms of the structure of the song let's just copy that across and let's copy everything else across and this time around what I'm going to do with the 808 is if I just select everything go into the piano row so select my pointer tool again zoom up command a now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move everything down an octave just to make this um hit harder in terms of the impact so if i solo it so you can hear what it is at the moment So that sample currently starts on this note right here, but I wanted to start on the exact same note an octave lower. So I can either just click and drag and move everything. Or another way to do it is um, just press Alt, Shift, and the down arrow. Right, let's start to have a think about how we want this song to start. So I know that I'm probably not going to start with this hit away. So if I just delete that, maybe delete this hi hat as well, delete this clap, delete this melody. So we're going to have the main guitar once coming into this as it is. Let's have a listen.
going to keep it simple for now just for the sake of the demonstration if i just select this two and just zoom in a little bit so i can see what's happening and i want sort of like a pause before the actual main drop so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to essentially delete everything that happens with the drums just for a minute so if i just click and drag so let's see what it sounds like if i took get rid of this and just to make this stronger we're gonna add a kick drum so again add my software instrument as an ESS 24 and I'm just gonna go ahead and find a kick drum that I like so let's record that in Quantize that to six times. Let's copy that over. That's where we are so far, but there's so much more we can do or not do with this track. That's just how music works. But um, maybe we can try some more interesting things with the melody. So let's add a flute and then maybe later on we could bounce out everything and then just mess around with it for a while. So if I add another instrument, let's select an empty channel strip. If I just press my library or Y on the keyboard, uh, let's find something to go on top of it maybe like a flute so what i can also do here is i can just search as well for what i'm looking for so if i just search for flute and let's have a listen to what they sound like sounds cool if you just bring that down in volume so i'm just going to play the track and try figure out something to go on top of it Size that. just press the inspector so I can see the mixer and by default some of these sounds are already sent to buses um, which um, basically let you um, add effects onto a separate channel and reuse them across different channels so very typically you use reverbs and delays um, on the bus so let's say it was on bus 3 so there's already a space designer which is a type of reverb and reverb is um, essentially a plugin that gives you space. So if you think of what you sound like when you are a, in a big corridor or when you've just moved into a new house with no furniture, it's just the reflections that you get from the size of the room. So if I just solo this, so S on the keyboard as well as a shortcut. And as the track is playing, I'm just gonna dial that up so you can actually hear what the reverb sounds like. So 
sounds like a short reverb let's was on bus for a different type of reverb so let's dial that up as well liking the sound of that so maybe we're going to take out some low frequencies as well from this so click on my eq and start to take out some of the lower frequencies so all the way from the start <laughs> 